Do you make stuff in the classroom other than messes? Oh, um, no, but research says that it's one of the best ways to learn. What if we dig into it? Let's do. <laughs> Hey there, cool teachers. Well, welcome to another episode of the show. Yeah. Uh, we'd like to give a special shout out to uh, my friend Brandon Hampton at LeBois Junior High uh, who inspired the show. This dude is amazing. Hey, Brandon. Hi, so we're, Brandon. We're talking about maker spaces, classrooms uh, where students experiment. They build and create. Um, hit us with the definition, Barbara. All right. So what constitutes a maker space, Chris? Okay. Maker spaces offer tools and the learning experiences needed to help people carry out their ideas. Right. So maker spaces are intended to appeal to people of all ages, past, present, and future, and are founded upon an openness to experiment, iterate, and create. Okay. The driving force behind is rooted in the maker movement, actually. It's comprised of artists and tech enthusiasts, engineers, builders, tinkerers, I like that word, and right. anyone else who has a passion for making things. What about girl robots? In the maker movement, can you make girl robots? I suppose. Okay, so the formation of the maker movement stems from the success of the Maker Fair. It was a gathering launched in 2006 and uh, propagated itself into numerous kind of community-driven events all over the world. So these have really popped up and have become really popular. So the big question, right, is do, do you need to use technology to create a makerspace. What do you think? Well, I think uh, most people think you do. They think, right. oh, I need a 3D printer or I need right. to have some sort of fancy schmancy yeah. stuff. But no, I mean, Fancy no. schmancy, not schmancy, required. Mm -mm, no. Uh, in this show, we'll highlight some makerspaces that use technology, yep. but also some other ways you can create a makerspace in your classroom that really doesn't use technology. I mean, okay. I think of technology as computers. And right, computers like and that. robots and, and stuff like that. Right. Even though it would be really cool to watch the robots fight. So I'm just going to throw that out there. Okay. Okay. So if you want to find out more about the maker movement, we've got some great ideas for you. And that's what this show is about. So you'll get super inspired. You need to get and read Martinez and Steger's book, Invent to Learn. It's awesome. Go to their website, click on the resources tab, and you'll get some excellent uh, ideas. So we're going to break down elementary schools, middle schools, and high school ways that you can implement your own makerspace. So All I'll right. start. Okay. It's super easy. It's a great way to get started in a makerspace in an elementary school, right? Simply design and create a new toy using yeah. any type of material, cardboard, to 3D printers. Right. How about that? Yeah, that's so simple, but kids would love right? to make toys. Create your own toy. How about right. that for a project like in a maker this. space? Well, I found this thing called Tickle. Now, oh. don't you love that name, Tickle? No, I don't. But it's a dialect of Scratch, and if you're familiar with Scratch, it's a programming tool yep. for younger students, although it probably I could probably maybe do it myself. I, I'm sure you could. Anyhow, uh, Tickle allows users to create animations, games, and stories in a Scratch-like fashion with an orca replacing the cat. Oh, okay. Isn't that? That yes, nice. yeah. It's real magic lies in the ability to make a variety of Bluetooth enabled toys and really? devices that are programmable by kids on an iPad. Get oh, that. that's pretty cool. Does that sound cool? It does. There, be, there may be no better way to introduce kids to the world of physical computing, robotics, or coding than wow. using Tickle. So tickle me. <laughs> There's no chance. So how about creating your own game, right? I use Sploder a lot. It's a free web-based software, but there are tons of others that require zero programming. Construct 2 is a really popular one. Game Maker Studio, uh, Click Team Fusion, Stencil, Craft Studio. Don't even get me started. I, I, could, we I could do a whole. At, I need to look at these. I'm not familiar with We'll these. do an episode on all of my favorite uh, game design tools. Yeah, that's great. How mm -hmm. about building a huge marble roller coaster in your classroom. Wow. I know students would love to do this. Your yeah. students will love it. At the same time, they'll learn about principles of physics. And we'll show you, here's a picture yeah. of one classroom set up right now with a roller coaster, marble roller coaster. That's a very, very cool. Almost like a Rube Goldberg machine in some ways. It's very cool. I love right? it. I, love I, it. I used to look at one that was in uh, the OMSI, the Oregon Museum of Science and Industry, when I was growing up. That was um, they called it the Gravitram, or gra yeah, and it mm -hmm. was one of these you, you know roller coasters for uh, for that basically like marbles. It was really cool. So, how about introducing your students to stop motion video? I've always wanted to do this. Oh I've my never gosh, done we it. need oh. to do it. We'll do an episode okay. on it. It's so much fun. Yeah. It's a they're great app based tools like iStop Motion that allow you to make inexpensive and easy stop-motion movies. 
That sounds like fun. Okay, so middle school middle is next. Middle school is next. So maker spacers don't, as we know, don't have to include computer they technology. Don't. That's so cool. Au contraire. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, set up your classroom to include various craft resources. I mean, this is so simple. And then let students decide what they want to make. So make it really interesting. Teach your students how to knit, how to sew. I mean, oh. How about even cook? Wait a minute. So maker spaces can be knitting spaces. Yes. Knitting team, here we come. I know. Encourage mm -hmm. them to build, create, tinker. There's my favorite word. Mm -hmm. Share and with the intent of completing a project. You know, okay. have them complete something. Not just dabbling and and but actually aiming for a project and completing. Right. How about setting up an after school club where students can be doing this and even parents can volunteer to be teachers who have those that skills. That would be cool. Wouldn't that be fun? That would be really cool. So how about teaching students how to fundraise for these projects? You did that with your students. Yep, I did. Okay. That was pretty cool. Sounds good. All right. How about teaching students how to solder, right? Soldering is this really cool and useful skill, um, you know, building advanced electronics. But that's not the only way that soldering is cool. You can do soldering with art. Uh, try a tool called Draudio, which turns a pencil into a simple music synthesizer. I can't even get that, but you'll have to tell yeah. me about that. There's also Minty Boost, which is a battery-powered cell phone charger that fits in, in a tiny gum tin. Wow. It's really, really cool. Yeah, you, you can do all sorts of cool stuff like that this. That reminds if, me. I if you know how to solder. I gave my son a soldering iron when he was way too young. He, you know, But he started learning how to solder when he was about six years old. I didn't know any better. What a terrible mother I was. But I'm getting, no, better. I don't think I'm getting so. better at it. Okay, we've talked about this on a previous show, but there's this device called Makey Makey, mm -hmm. and it's an invention kit, yes. they say, for everyone. You're looking at pictures of it right now. Makey Makey is an excellent tool for a tinkering, my favorite word now, classroom. This tool creates a simple connection between the computer and everyday objects. So, you know, we talked like about this. Imagine playing a piano mm -hmm. on a, or, you know, bananas, using bananas, or using Play-Doh as a game controller. Yeah. Isn't that wild? That is so cool. So, you know, you can create makey-makey invention time. Okay, so we're going to rush through a couple more here. We've got high school. So there are a bunch of tools. Raspberry Pi, uh, Arduino, I, didn't, I always say that wrong, and other open source microcontrollers like the ones you were talking about right. that can be used to kind of solve everyday problems. You can build ro robots that respond to uh, sensors, lights, or, or colors, and even talk to the Internet. You can ask students to invent their own robots and machines with these tools and then document those inventions online so others can learn from their efforts. Oh, I think Or they can so download a recipe and solve a problem by rebuilding somebody else's. That's what's so great about these. You can also get really low cost washable wearable computers using Lily Pond uh, and their site in Arduino Wearables uh, book. And there's a great book by Tony Olson uh, that you should check out. It but just sounds too tech. crazy. It I mean, does. it's so much different than when we went to school and we were writing on those stone tablets. Mm -hmm. There was so, that. Anyhow, teach and learn the web. Log into Mozilla's Teach Activities site and browse the various lessons and activities from web literacy intro to CSS to using mm -hmm. Java to build your own mod in Minecraft. I love it. So this is a great resource for teachers who want to introduce their students and themselves to programming and web literacy. Yeah. So how about having students create a class textbook or other iBook using iBooks Author? And you right? know about that I'm tool. doing that right now. Yeah. Um, they could create their own interactive book and they could even sell it to, yeah. to fund a class trip or something like that. Activity that fun? would require lots of cognitive skills, organizing, writing, publishing, Publishing, marketing, revising, um, you know, maybe maybe you could do something like that. How about students creating their own interactive books for interact like to replace certain interactive sites or lessons that they yes. learned? Wouldn't that be fun? That would be so cool. Okay. Take away from the makerspaces movement. We've talked about ideas about how to incorporate makerspaces in your classroom, but the concept of makerspaces, really, 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 truly, really, honest to God, really, is not new. Are you sure? It's not new. In okay. fact, including and honoring creativity in the classroom should always be part of our curriculum, right? It should, we're yeah. all makers. We're all creators. So good teachers always include opportunities for students to create, experiment all the time. You don't need a 3D printer. But will it improve test scores? I know. I see. Here we go again. No, but we're we not going we there. We won't go there. But all you really need is to express the belief that students are creators, that you can do this. Yeah, that's really, Let really cool. Let your students cool. believe in themselves. Mm -hmm. So let's do it. Let's make all, everybody okay. a maker. Awesome. So these are just a couple of the ideas. But we've got a few more if you want to stick around extracurricular and, uh, and just maybe 
learn a little bit about how you might make the argument for how, why you want to do this and why you want to change what you do. So thanks for sticking around. Thanks for being here. Like, subscribe, send something in. Send uh, pictures of things that you've made. And, uh, and thanks for hanging out with us. Thank <laughs> you.